Thank you, Madam. Our next speaker for two minutes, Mr. Verhofstadt. First of all, I want to say to uh, Mrs. Foster that I'm not a big fan of Jeremy Corbyn, but saying that it is Jeremy Corbyn uh, with the, the problem, problem here, well, everybody knows that the problem is a division inside the Conservative Party. That is the problem. Everybody knows that. And, 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 and moreover, we are all following every day uh, the, the votings uh, inside the House of Commons. I can tell you that the, the sessions of the House of Commons have become more popular even than the matches in the Premier League uh, uh, in, 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 in Europe. The only difference is, well, I can tell you, it's always a draw there in, uh, in the House of uh, Commons, while there are more goals scored, uh, fortunately, I should say, mainly by also Belgian players, uh, into, the, uh, uh, in, in, into, the, into the Premier League. So let's be, uh, let's be very sincere with each other. Let's hope that these cross-party negotiations that start today give a solution in the coming days. And we, from all sides, we have said it, we are open to change the political declaration to make that possible. Customs union, free trade arrangement, a, a common market 2.0, maybe something else, we are open to do so. But it has been done before the 12th of April. And before the 12th of April, Mrs. Forster, there has to be a meaningful vote in the House of Commons so that we have a basis to do so. And secondly, we need also a roadmap so that we are sure that everything is implemented in the secondary legislation in Britain until and before the 22nd of May. And last, and that's my last remark that I want to make, I know that a number of colleagues are thinking, ah, maybe a long extension, long extension. Don't make you any illusion. The fact that we should create a, a situation where Britain is with one foot inside the Union and with one, side, and one foot outside the Union is a tragedy, is bad for the European Union. Can you imagine a little bit that... Uh, the new Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain, uh, Mr. Johnson or Mr. Gove, both the architects, the architects of the Brexit disaster would have the keys in their hands on the future of the European Union. I cannot think about it, that that will happen. It will be a disaster for the European Union and it's not the way, to, uh, the, the way we have to go forward. Finally, I think, and that is what uh, my... Uh, colleague Mr. Gualteri said, the only advantage of Brexit, Mr. Gualteri, is in fact the following. That is that people can see for themselves now what it means when populists and nationalists take power in a country and make an image of a country and a future that is not existing in that country. It's a good lesson for the European elections, I think.